Now let's try doing the calculations for setting up a buffer and measuring the pH change upon addition of acid to an acidic buffer. Here is the question here and you may want to pause to read it. Now how do we start doing this question? It becomes apparent that this dude is trying to set up a buffer because it is explicitly stated. So when we think of buffers, the equation that should pop up in your mind to find pH, of course, is the henderson hasselbalch equation. And if you don't remember the name well, I remember it as the handsome handbag equation, but the HH equation will do. So this is the equation. We just need all these things on the right, and then we will get the pH. That sounds easy. Ka is already given. Concentration of ethanoic acid is already given. The concentration of ethanoid is almost given. Just a quick mole calculation will give you the concentration. Put all of that into the equation. Punch the calculator with your fingers, not your fist and you will get pH equals to 5.35. Now here's part 2 of the question, but you didn't see that coming. Pause if you need to. So find the number of added moles of HCl, and next, as for all equilibrium calculations, we draw an ice table with a pencil. Now we have been using the ice table in terms of concentration so far, that's only because the so far all our volumes have been constant. Therefore, it doesn't matter if we use concentration or moles directly. However, this time, we added 10 cm3 of acid. And we must therefore take into account the new volume. So let's fill up this ice table in terms of mole, not molar instead. There are only two components that we are concerned about because we can find the pH using the HH equation. We just need the salt, ethanoic, and the acid, ethanoic acid. We have the initial number of moles of the acid and the salt. We have to change because, well, one mole of HCl reacts with one more ethanoate to form one mole of ethanoic acid. And we have just calculated the number of moles of HCl added, so we can get the final number of moles. Divide this by the new concentration, new volume, sorry, for both sides, and we can get the concentration of ethanoic acid and ethanoic after the buffer mops up the acid and reaches the new equilibrium. So let's find the new pH using the HH equation. Plugging the values from the ice table inside this equation, the concentration of ethanoid and ethanoic acid, we get the new pH. What do you notice about this pH change from the original one? It is only different by 0.06, and that is pathetic, which is good, because that is exactly what we wanted in the first place. Contrast this with the addition of the same amount of acid to an unbuffered solution at pH 5.35. We can find the initial number of moles of acid and the relevant number of moles of acid HCl. Get the final number of moles of acid divided by the new volume to get the new concentration. Doing a negative log 10 of this, we get the pH equals to 3. And that is really significant. A difference of 2.35 compared to 0.06. And it was only 10 cm3 of 0.1 molar acid, which is dilute. Now you see why buffers are so important in maintaining pH.